Hello and welcome to Soul Snacks. This episode, we have a very special guest with us. She's going to be sharing so many amazing snacks with us. Oh my goodness, like, I can't wait. I can't wait. Um, so welcome on the show, Mrs. O. Thank you so much for joining and honoring the invitation on Soul Snacks. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be here. I'm delighted to be here, so. Thank you, thank you. It's an honor to have you. Um, so yeah, let's, let's get into it, Mrs. O. Please share with us, um, first of all, of course, introduce yourself so the viewers know who you are and just tell us more about your experience educating Gen Z and Gen Alpha over the years and how the whole experience has been for you. Okay, thank you for having me once again. You're so My welcome. name is Caroline Nomotosho. I have been teaching children between the ages of two and a half to about 10 for over 17 years. So 18 wow. years will make um, sorry, September, we'll make 18 years that I've been teaching. Wow. And it's been such an amazing journey, you know, all through these years. Um, I've experienced the transformation from, you know, from one level of technology to another. Yeah. So it just keeps advancing, you know, um, year in, year out. So it's been an amazing experience. Um, starting to teach the Gen Z generation. And, um, Thinking about it, I was like, "Oh my God, I'm getting, I'm getting younger." <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually getting younger I know, I feel because that I can amazing. count the number of children. I mean, the number of years that children have been through my space, mm. um, year in, year out, mm. and I'm looking at, yeah, what has actually evolved, what has changed over the years, and I remember, and you know, recollecting, I remember. Um, teaching the Gen Z was an era where we there wasn't so much you know noise about the use of devices and things like mm. that. We could still handwrite our lesson plan at that time, even though the laptops and things like that were available. Of course, we would type my lesson plan. I was you know um, computer literate at that time, you know when I started teaching. But now my reliance on the technology. So I can imagine for the children mm. what their reliance on technology, use of technology is. Now. Now. So it was at a time where it was still the um, time of Mario and things like that. <laughs> there were iPads when I started teaching the children. Wow. And so there wasn't so much emphasis on use of technology, even though we tried as much as possible to infuse you know, technology into teaching space at that time. Uh, our major technology tool at that time was maybe Promethean boards and okay. smart boards. Wow. And um, then we had the desktop. Mm -hmm. you know in our classes and that was it and yeah that was that was basically it our children were not expected to bring in their devices to school and so that was the generation you know that i started with and that, that's the gen z generation um yes we had a whole lot of fun it was engaging and there was a whole lot of social interactions you know amongst mm -hmm. the children yeah. and yes parents were equally hands-on at that time. Yeah. But what I like about the um, Gen Alpha is the fact that parents are also more involved, so there is more awareness in mm. terms of our space. Right now, parents are more aware of what tools, what skills do the teacher require to teach the children. You have more parents who are involved, mm. you know, with the Gen Alpha. But the thing is the Gen Alpha, without this device, without the devices, it's more or less like your world is crumbling yeah, you know you, yeah. you rely on you know you rely on technology you want to engage the children for example there has to be some sort of games and you know <laughs> student engagement because there is um shorter attention span yes permit me to yes. say that yeah and so i remember recollecting teaching children of gen z at that time yes they didn't really like writing yeah well i could recount that they liked to write you know stories and we will recreate we will retell in our own imagination so but with the gen alpha we've had to compel them kind wow. of you know wow. to 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 just Put something you know on paper because of course you know as traditional teachers you still want children you know to do some sort of you know writing yes. because the truth is writing exercise is actually a very good exercise it helps with the brain development it mm. helps with your concentration mm. it helps with the fine motor skills you know to keep improving and developing yeah i mean it comes with its own advantages you know yeah, absolutely. yes i know some people will make a case for how about them getting, you know, an um, e-pen and 
right. I mean, there's actually a difference, you know. If yeah, you know what I, I agree. I, I totally you're agree. About the orientation, you're talking about the size, you're talking about spacing, you're talking about legibility. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's it's actually been it's actually been fun. Mm. It's been fun because the truth is. Um, Teaching children in Gen uh, the Gen Alpha children, it also makes you as a teacher to also become technologically aware, more mm, aware. You yeah. Know? So you are into online safety and all of those things, things that you know I never imagined in my world yeah. that I would actually learn. And then there's more availability of information now. Mm, um, yep. Yep. So when it talks about um, reading, promoting reading skills, there are a lot of platforms, online platforms that you can leverage on you know to promote reading but there is this um some sort of difference hard copy books are still very much available but mm -hmm. ah, hey we're moving into okay get your ebook get your e-textbook get mm. your e this get your e that mm. and so it's more or less like our lives is kind of uh, moving onto that device yeah you know what time yeah so it's yeah. it's 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 wow. Revolt. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Thank you so much for that, Mrs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like you said, the evolution of technology. Crazy. It's been so rapid. And I think moving on to the next question, my next question for you, I think the greatest oxymoron with Generation Z and Generation Alpha is the blessing and the curse of technology. That's my opinion. Um, and I, I, I would love to hear your experience about a major blessing that you've witnessed. You've already you know, mentioned some. A major blessing that you've witnessed and also a major curse that you've experienced throughout the years of experience uh, of your experience teaching both generations all right the list is actually endless ah. <laughs> for the pros and the cons of you know the yeah. use of technology but um one thing that i like about the use of technology is the fact that it helps children with their level of independence i would say mm. independence in terms of okay so you've assigned a task to them to do for example so instead of waiting for moms and dads you know to come back from work to support them because technology is available and of course in a safe space i would say yeah because one thing we try to do as much as possible um in my own environment is we lay so much emphasis on online safety mm. because of course one has to be very aware you know of cyber bullying and the predators online and yeah. things like that so we encourage a whole lot of um um, safety so parents put in a lot of um, um, security measures on the on their devices just to monitor that space so for me the children have been able to independently complete their tasks at different mm. at different levels and for me I, I really love that and you find children you know of this age I mean gone are the days where you have to sit and then one computer teacher will open the textbook to teach you what microsoft is like That's and true. then i remember desktop and things like that we don't need to teach the basics anymore because yeah. right from the womb now the children even know what the screen is like they yeah. know what the cpu is like yeah. because they daily interact with that mm. so the fact that you don't have to go from you know like teaching Fortran, teaching computer, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. You don't need all of those things because this is here with the children. Yeah. So they, they, they were born into it. Yes. Um, so they are called the digital natives, mm -hmm. right? So it's been a blessing because some basics, they've just learned it. It's just in it in them. Yes. Nobody yes. taught them. Yeah. They just, you know, it's modeled and they pick up on that, um, on that skill. Mm -hmm. So getting children to become independent in terms of taking ownership of their learning is an advantage. And I will say that in terms of the presentation of their work, so it's in this generation that you will find um, an eight-year-old, a seven-year-old getting on independently to put up something about themselves, to do a research mm. you know, about a specific topic or any area of interest. You'll find them doing that, you know, mm. by themselves, yeah. putting everything together um, on a Microsoft PowerPoint. So things that we were taught that we had teachers to teach us at that time, I mean, <laughs> the computer is there now, you know, That's to teach true. the children. I like the fact that, you know, children can also keep tab um, of their progress, mm. you know, with technology. Because um, a lot of learning um, ha um, has been gamified. Mm. So we have what we call gamified le um, learning, where learning is fun. Some children who um, find 
telling the time difficult for example yeah because of technology you find that everything has been turned into uh, i mean into a game yeah and then you compete against the computer or you <laughs> compete against you maybe your friends online and with that the children are like no i need to get up to the next level mm. the same thing applies to reading so you find that the children are as a result of their interest they are trying as much as possible to push themselves to get onto the next level to mm. get onto the next level and in a way that helps build their intrinsic um motivation mm. you know to to learn so i would say these are these are blessings of computer that i have seen i remember years back when um because at the end of the year we will do what you call a memory book Okay. I don't know if you remember. No. So we'll do what you call a memory book where um, you just pick samples of children's work throughout the year, maybe their best, or you okay. allow the children to choose their pieces of work, not more than 10. So more like profiling, just to see for the children to see their progress throughout the year. And I remember I would spend <laughs> I would spend endless nights, you know, cutting and making ah, sure that the, the, yeah, the, the yeah, worksheets yeah. are well trimmed and we mount them on paper and we stick them together. I'm so... <laughs> 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 but not anymore because of technology. Mm. Now the children are the ones who are saying, okay, this is the content of what I want my, my, my memory book to be like. Mm. But instead of us having what we call a hard copy of memory book, again, we first of all with the Gen Z, we transition to the use of memory CD. Mm, so the VCD, so okay. we record everything on VCD. But now we have a safe space where it's just a link away yeah. or in the children's um, Google Classroom or something. Yeah. And it's forever accessible because it's cloud-based. Yes, so yes. those are some of the advancements I've seen. I've seen creativity. Mm. I've even seen collaboration online, mm. you know, with, with the use of technology. Now I'm talking about the courses. Mm. And that's the bit I really do not like to talk about mm. because no matter how you try to make um, the space very safe for the children and sane there is a whole lot of information overload yeah that if yeah. children are not um properly guided yeah. you know um they they would have that tendency to do things you know that uh, that are not you know um palatable to 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 one and yeah. suitable to to one as an and children adult. are very curious they as are well. very curious yeah. you know despite the fact that you have all those security measures in place you have the safety and all of those things parents have control over the apps i remember my son saying to me mom even though yes you put all these measures in place but i can still go at the back end and do something mm. i can boycott whatever you have done wow. and he showed me so wow. they are more wow. advanced than us wow no matter what we do they are actually more advanced than us so it's important that even we as parents it's important that we are also forever trying to upgrade and upskill mm. ourselves so that we are not left behind because yeah. the truth is yeah. the children have left us when it's as far as you know the, um, the use of um, digital technology is, yeah. um, is concerned so that 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 you know i've, I've experienced cyber bullying mm. online and even though we talk about safeguarding of children online yes we have the physical safeguarding we have the emotional safeguarding but with online we've done we do all sorts of, you know, pep talk and all of this thing. We talk about the ills and the positives in the use of devices yeah. and all of this. But I mean, when I experienced that cyberbullying, the two children, you know, cyberbullying wow. each other. I, I mean, I was, I, 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 I was, I was really sad. Mm. Like, so we've had to move things that were happening physically. We've moved them, you know, online. And so now you talk about, um, you talk about depression amongst mm, children yeah. these are you know this is a topic that it's not so popular yeah. you know and in, in years past but it's become a norm in our generation i mm. mean in this generation yeah. now because yeah. because of over exposure you know to, to technology mm. screen time and so some children lose focus so if it is not if their learning is not online if you have not gamified their learning mm. then they're not learning mm. so some of them are, have become addicted you know so to technology so this is another danger mm. that i have seen uh, with the use of technology mm. um what other danger have i seen there are actually so many ills you know that come with the use of technology mm. as may, we have so many blessings yeah and at the same time we have so many we have many ills yeah. you know, at the same yeah. time so i mean the list is endless mm. you know what i mean
Wow, thank you so much for sharing that, Mrs. O. Yeah. So, are you able to, what you've list, you said the list is endless, are you able to share with us some tips for maximizing the blessing of technology and also some tips for taming the curses of technology as well? All right, so for maximizing the blessings of technology, for me, I would say that we should, for whatever we will do, problem solving creativity is key mm. and i've seen that one of the blessings of technology the use of technology is actually creativity and problem solving yeah and i feel that as parents as um, adults we can leverage on that you know to relate whatever the children are doing to real life situation and you will be amazed at what are the, are the solution that the children will bring to our world mm. i mean we should not just limit it to oh um he's a child she's a child she doesn't know what she's talking about they actually do know what they are talking about mm. i mean and so because of that we should um we should create a real life uh, we should find opportunities to create real life experiences for the children so mm. that you know they can forever think about how they will be adding value mm. to their world even mm. through that device you know that they've got with them mm. it's not just for you to just enjoy yourself it's not all about mm. myself myself we can flip it around and say yes this is for a certain reason why do we have technology use of technology in education yeah. why do we have technology in healthcare mm. why do we have use technology in um, in the airspace mm. why do we use technology in different fields of Amazing. life and yeah. you know liberate us to say okay these are your interests how can how then can you use technology you know to advance your interest what can you do yeah how can you solve problem you you know we just create those you know those scenarios for the children mm. and it's just for us to keep advancing their level of creativity and problem solving mm. but what i see a lot of parents do is oh okay you're busy okay off you go you know to your device mm. what is the purpose for every for every use of technology for children, I feel that it should be purposeful. Mm. In as much as it's meant for entertainment, so you have one hour, for example, you know, to play a game or do whatever. We must find other reasons why they should be using the, I mean, using their devices mm. beyond just keep yourself busy because yeah. it's in the place of them keeping themselves busy that we lose our family values, yeah. we lose the bond. Yeah. Sure. And so children would not be able to connect with their parents. And so they're talking, they're discussing with their parents and the next thing is the attention is on their devices. Mm. So we must guide the children, you know, to carefully use their devices you know in a very positive way more or less like you are here to solve a problem mm. so your device is to be used to solve a problem mm. it's not about you when we make children take it away from them and say it's not about you it's about the world around you it's about the influence the impact you will make in your world yeah. i think that way you will find the children say okay it's not actually to i mean to for me to be engaged because I don't have an activity to do yeah. but it's because there is a purpose so parents can actually leverage on that to make sure that their children become problem I mean solution um, bringers to yeah. the world yeah. and you know they are solution oriented much more than you know using it for other other reasons mm. then I would also say that how can we use that to tame the tips I did say earlier that the children are more advanced than us yeah, yeah. and so we just have to be intentional as parents mm. I would say that we have to be intentional as parents this is an age where there is a whole lot of clamor for intentional parenting mm -hmm. and so we need to take it top notch to another level I'm aware that, um, of Lagos moms for example from time to time would organize master classes for parents Mm. So she has master classes for children too okay. to teach them how to stay safe Lagos online. Lagos Moms, that's a yes. YouTube channel. It's a YouTube channel. She has a platform. Mm. I mean, she's she does. She's amazing. Wow, she's a, amazing. Into, so she's. I think her own solution is for her to influence the digital natives and their parents. Mm. So there are. Okay. There are programs for children and there are also programs for teenagers and also for adults. Oh, amazing. So Shout out parents, Lagos Moms. <laughs> <laughs> so for, for parents, I mean, parents can actually sign up on ma for master classes and you'll find that you and your children or your child, you will be at par 
if you know as much as possible so that that gap those um gray areas mm. because they've been identified you you're, it's very quick for us to i mean plug plug those areas you know okay. um if i may say that then i would also say that in terms of the use of um, um technology it's also important that for 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 those who have that orientation of promoting family values yeah i mean there should be a time a cut off time where this is the okay between this time and this time is when you are allowed to use your device even as a teenager because for me i define a child as anybody who is under 18 years mm. so yes you are a teenager <laughs> you are still under my roof yeah. i'm still the one paying your bills and i'm still my sole responsibility is to look after you until you get to that age and so we'll reach that compromise of um where you it gets to a time this is a cut off time Hmm. for the use of your device this is a time where we need to sit together as a family and talk about issues and share experiences hmm. because i find that if you don't do that yeah you have children i mean three siblings from the same father and the same mother they are living in the same house and they are strangers <laughs> to themselves yeah you see yep. even a family of five, a family of four, dad is on the phone, mom is on the phone, and the children are on their phones or on their iPad, on, on whatever. Yeah. There should be a time where we are saying to ourselves, A, no, this is a time for us to come together, to bond as a family, so that we can keep promoting the family values. Yeah. You know, the yeah. Bible says that train up a child in the way he should go. So that when he grows old, he will not depart, depart from, from it. it. So yeah. whatever we instill in them at a young age is when they what they will grow up with. So we must define what our family values are. We must define what our mission is as a family mm. and create activities around that will tailor towards promoting that vision yeah. and that mission so that the children collectively will you know will fall in line and everybody will grow up to love themselves mm. and not be selfish because the truth is um give it as it may i love technology but one thing that it can the harm it can do you know to children is them not having essence mm. or having sense of um, a family, mm. sense of belonging, yeah. this is mine, it's all about, so it makes them become self-centered, mm. you know, if you may. I remember with the Gen Z, it was a case of there's one desktop in the family and the children will have to take turns. So they must learn to collaborate. Yes. yes, my teacher has given me a task to do, but you have only 30 minutes on the computer. Another child has maybe another one hour if he's older on the computer. So it teaches them tolerance. Yes. It teaches them communication. Mm. It teaches them patience. Yeah. But now it's accessible. As you're giving birth to a child, right from, <laughs> as a child is a neonate, I mean, the child has a device. Yeah. So every child has a device now and there is danger in that. Mm. And also, I would also say that um, we should clear out the rooms mm. of all sorts of devices. So um, I'll give an example of is what that I every do. every night? Yes, I'll mm. give an example of what I do in my house my son loves he loves his device so much mm. and so i had to put a cap on it once it's eight o'clock that's the end to the use of device once it's eight o'clock that's the end to whatever to your ps whatever it is anything at all that's the cut off time and then you submit your phone mm. that's the end mm. no more so from eight to six the following morning is free from all of yeah, those things yeah, and then yeah. i also think that it's very important for parents to also um, yes, it's good for us to shield the children away from those dangers. But at the same time, it's important to talk about, so have an orientation, give the children orientation about the dangers mm. that are available. Talk about these things. Mm. Because if you don't talk about them, the children will fall prey. Yeah. So the same way we have physical grooming, we have online grooming. It's mm. important that you teach the children when you encounter, have this experience, so create that experience for them. When you have, when you encounter this, this is what you need to do. Raise a red flag, mm. speak to this person. So these are the people you can talk to when you see this happening online. Do not share your information. Do not share your home address. Mm. Do not, no, 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 no. Do not even impersonate. Be yourself, but be aware that there are so many prey, so many, so many predators 
online. So it's yeah. important that we talk about all of these things. We should yeah. not just assume that the school will do the work mm. of safeguarding your children for you online. Yeah. We as parents, we have that responsibility to also do that for our children. Absolutely. And we have to be very intentional about it. Every experience that happens, you hear a story, come home and talk about it with your children. Mm. You've read something, it could, be, it could be something you've read in the newspaper, it could be something that maybe your colleague mentioned to you, anything that has to do with the children's safety, especially um, with respect to the use of technology and the um, device and things like that, talk about it because mm. you cannot over talk. The truth is, even when they pretend like they are not listening, yeah. that voice of reasoning will keep resonating and yes. echoing yes. over and over yes. again. Wow, thank you. So Mrs. O, next I want us to talk about resilience, building resilience in our children, Gen Z and Gen Alpha, because it's important for us to build emotional and mental fortitude in them. We're finding that the, their threshold, particularly Gen Z and Gen Alpha, their threshold for pain, their threshold for stress, their threshold for adversity, challenges, way lower. It's way lower than previous generations. So how can we begin to build more resilience in them at their level? All right, that's an interesting question to ask. And um, I will say that that actually stems from our own parenting style mm. and skills. And um, so it starts from we asking ourselves as parents, what exactly do we want? What is the reality in this life? Mm. What is mm. it like? Because <laughs> we mustn't create, you know, a fantasy False. Yep. for yep. the children. Create a reality, bring them into that reality. You know and let them understand that there is a place for tolerance there is a place for adversity yeah. you've been through that experience yeah. and so that enough alone should give you an opportunity to speak to your children about adversity and how you as an as a child at that time was able to navigate you know through that those experiences mm. i mean such experiences happen to people at different stages of life. True. Some would have such experiences as child, as a child. Another person might have it as a teenager, some yeah. maybe as a young adult and all of you, and, and what have you. But the truth about life is, life is not a bed of roses. No. But the world and the impression we create for those children and it's usually is well meaning is a bed of roses. Mm. Well, I get it yeah. that it's well meaning, but no. But we must also be realistic yeah. of the kind of children we have in this generation. Yeah. They take your words very seriously. Mm. And so that's why when you promise them something, you have to ensure that you know you keep to your promise. Yeah. All right. So let me go back to the question now. Talking about adversity, I mean adversity is good for anybody yeah, in life. Yeah, absolutely. Because the truth is, you will learn from that experience. Mm -hmm. And my Bible tells me that when a righteous man falls one, one time, he would rise up seven times. So which means there is a place of failure. Mm -hmm. There is a place for falling. Absolutely. There is a place for yeah. such negative experiences. Mm -hmm. And so it's important that we also allow children to experience such. And it starts very basically from a child is given a task, homework for example, mm. and is a challenging homework. And the child is now crying and wailing <laughs> and sulking. I'm not going to do it. Mm. And you are like, oh no, I can't stand it when this child cries. Mm. Please, if this child does not cry, I don't know. At what time will the child cry mm. and to develop the muscles? And, you know, <laughs> at what time yeah. will that child cry? Yeah. So it's important that, you know, we as parents, we caught ourselves as well. We've slacked in some areas. And because this is a reality of life, that homework is challenging. Okay, why don't you try again? Give that child the opportunity to try. Mm. Encourage that child to try yeah. and keep trying. Don't be so quick to save we are helicopter too, this parenting. Helicopter parenting, <laughs> we are just too quick to fix it. Yeah. Mommy fix it. Yeah. And because we are forever there to fix it, when they become adults, and that's what we see going on around in our generation yes. with you know people who are getting married to each other, there is no tolerance for, you know, for there, there's no tolerance for adversity. Mm. Nothing like that. I can't stay. Why? Because my mom is there to salvage the situation, mm. to save the day. My dad is there. He would send some money to my account. Mm. My, you know, 
we we we, we teach them to become over reliant mm. so when they are children that's when we can actually address this and begin to instill you know this attitude of resilience yeah. into children yeah. so allow them to fail let's talk about it read a story for the children read a story okay uh, um i think i just taught some of my children recently about the little red hen okay. um, who was very hard working and you had the dog the my the mouse and the cat who would nap all day and it got to the time where yes the meal had been made he found you know so he he grew the wheat so he found a grain of wheat uh, planted it and it grew he took it to the meal it was milled made a cake out of you know out of it oh and then it was at that point that others were like okay now it's time for us to have a snack we want to have eat you know some cake and little red hen said oh really <laughs> you did not help me mm. so why should i share with you mm. that's part of what that's what we are saying sometimes you have to be very firm mm. it's okay for us to be firm it's not every time that our children will like us yeah. i always say to my children so when you have a um, headache for example and you take and you take your medicine is it very sweet no but the truth is the effect it has on you the impact is for the positive yeah and that's how adversity is absolutely so let them see that mm. adversity is like a that's pill true. it's like a pill it would all work out for your good yeah if you do not remain at that level you must learn to rise up yes so there's a yoruba addict that says that when a child falls down the child you know moves on mm. and just keeps running mm. but if an adult falls down the adult stops looks behind and like what's the cost of my <laughs> fall of this fall and then moves on why because next time when he's going through that route he knows that oh there is something here an obstacle here and i must learn to avoid it mm. and that's the experience so we must teach our children to develop resilience in their character mm. so it comes from you are playing with your friends you have one or two friends who does not like you mm -hmm. so why don't you find out why that friend does not like you and if that friend does not like you you can go on and make another friend yeah. you mustn't be too forceful or, or, you know in your relationship these are the things that we can talk to the children about mm. we can use real life experiences you can teach them i mean the bible is so rich so mm. rich so rich you know for those who are christians it has so many life lessons to teach the children about um, about adversity mm. and we we'll learned that lesson even from the lord jesus christ yeah. he had said yes it would you know adversity would happen but he said be of good cheer the problem is there but be of good cheer because he has overcome the world for us have that hope have that belief that he has overcome the world for us so develop it also in their competence mm. And so it's important, let them learn some skills. Even in their, maybe you have five-year-olds, seven-year-olds who are into baking. Of course, the first cake they will ever bake is going to be a mess. <laughs> but teach them to keep trying and yeah, not give up. Yeah. They are doing their homework, for example. Teach them, it's okay for you not to even get it right. Mm. So when they fail, it's a learning, it's a learning opportunity, it's a learning curve for them. Yeah. So watch the experience and that is your application going forward. Mm. When we keep doing this from time to time, children then will develop their resilience because you are not teaching them as a teenager when mm. they've already become um, smoked fish. <laughs> and so <laughs> you are still trying to catch them young yes. when the fish is still fresh in the ocean. Yeah. We've not brought it out of the ocean. It's yeah. still very fresh. Yeah. You know, all you need to do is just take it to another environment mm. and I'm very sure it will adapt with just one or two conditions. Yes. Talking about resilience in terms of our attitude as parents as well, um, children feed off our energy mm. as parents so let's say this is the era of covid uncertainties post covid there are still so many uncertainties um, um inflations all over the world the economic space is not is not even friendly in any way in any part of the world yeah. this season this period is really difficult and you as a parent what is your attitude what do you say to your children mm. What do they see you do? Mm. How do you navigate this experience? Are you very optimistic that there is light at the end of the tunnel? Mm. Or it's a case of, you know what? I've lost my job and we've lost everything. Mm. Is that what you say to your children or to your child? Mm. 
So it's important that we also develop a positive attitude. It's very easy for us to say, you know what, you have to do this, you have to do that. But our children will learn much more from us. Not what we say, but what we do. So what we do matter. Every single thing we do as parents, they matter a lot because the children will pick up from that. They will remember a time where when mom's business, mom had a business um, um, failure, for example, and oh, I remember my mom was able to do this, do this. Yes, you know, she was down a bit for one or two days, but she picked up and these, these, these were the steps taken, you know, and for her to bounce back. So because we've said that adversity is a part, is part of life. Yeah. It's an yeah. integral part of life. Yes. So why do we want to shield the children away from it? Yeah. Um, so we are looking at the experience we have now. The children cannot have everything that they need yeah. or that they've requested for. So what we say to them, how we make them see the reality of our world, it also matters. Mm -hmm. Are we navigating this experience you know, with a very positive outlook? Or we, we are always looking very gloomy because, you know, every time you are always calculating, I need to pay my bills, I need to do this, I need to do that. Let's cheer up because it's just a phase. It's only a phase. It can't, I mean, it can't last forever. And that's why I love that book of that guy. I can't remember the name of the author now. The, um, the guy who wrote um, Tough Times Never Last. It's only tough people who do. I think I would have loved if he could write, you know, a version for children. But even those experiences, parents can read that book and, you know, pick up from it. Um, so as parents, we need to develop a positive outlook towards those um, when, when things go south. L understand your children or understand your child. What are the things that, you know, trigger off your child? What are the things that your children are really, really in love with? And how do you know that? How do you know all of these things? When you see a child who enjoys, you know, a, a particular activity, that's, that's that child's calling. Just, okay, but you have to go to school. It's important that we go to school, but you can choose whatever you want to be. I have had so many experiences and, you know, cases of people who would go to school, their parents would spend a lot of money on them, becoming doctors, lawyers, and things like that. And at the end of the day, they come back to own and establish a fashion house. Some of them will go into catering. Yes, it, the education, of course, will give you that advantage. Absolutely. No doubt about it. But let's not leave, um, let's not force the kind of life we want our children. Let's not force it on them. Allow them to be themselves. If a child says to you, I want to go to school to study um, secretarial studies, for example, it might not make... <laughs> I know it's one vague course, you know, in Nigerian universities where they study to become secretary, office secretary and things like that. Okay. If that is what your child wants to become, of course there will be professional courses, you can be a company secretary, that child might later on have interest in studying law, company law and things like that. There will be opportunity to improve. It's just the basic. I mean, learning in life is a continuum. It's a continuum. It, ne it never ends. So allow your children to be themselves. Let them grow. Let them just enjoy their childhood. A lot of children have routines that it's back to back. Yeah. Monday, no, the start of the week is a Sunday. So I would say Sunday to Saturday. So they wake up in the morning. There is this thing they have to do. 15 minutes of this, 10 <laughs> minutes of this. You have your food menu. You do this. After that, and everything is timetabled. Not even here where, okay, so what's your interest? What would you even like to do today? Offer them choices. Offer, offer your children choices. Learn to know them. Okay? Don't, don't, don't let them live a scripted life. Learn to know your children. Study them. What do they have interest in? What is their area or well, what are their areas of interest? And help, you know, guide whatever they are doing and their activities. Tailor it around their interest. I understand the place of, yes, I own a conglomerate and all of that. But trust me, you might have 10 children, you might have 5 children. It might just be one of those children who will be interested in that. It's fine. And if you don't have any child who's interested in that, where is the place of estate? I mean, you can, yes, you can develop it into a trust, yeah. grow it into a trust and that business will continue. It will outlive you. And I think why um, some of these things um, happen is because, you know, fear of unknown. I want this child to carry on with my legacy. I want this one. I want that one. How about that child's legacy? 
what is that child created in this world why is that child in the world you know to solve a problem i always say to people we are all in our spaces no matter how minute the contribution we are making to the world there is something you are contributing you might not contribute at a very mega um, you know macro space it might be a micro space it could just be one person you might just be called in this life to live a purpose a purposeful life just for one person if it is just one person why don't you enjoy it if it is two people enjoy it if you are called to solve problem for you know the entire world enjoy it however is anybody called to solve the problem of the whole world it's, it will still be you know an integral part of the world so allow them to be and don't force your own life on them they shouldn't compensate for the things you lost or you missed out as a child they shouldn't be the one compensating for the for it it's not fair in my own opinion <laughs> Thank you so much, Mrs. Oh, wow. Amazing, amazing, amazing. These ones, I don't know, they're not snacks, so I don't think I'll call them snacks. These are meals for you. <laughs> meals for you. Thank you for joining us. On it's Soul a snacks. pleasure. It's been awesome. It's I've a learned pleasure. so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you for joining us, too. And um, just want to say if this has helped you, please share it please like the video please comment let's hear from you let's communicate with you and don't forget to subscribe all right take care and have a good one mrs o it's been amazing thank you for having me <laughs> mm -mm. wholesome snacks for the soul now you know that was shareworthy so why don't you share like comment and subscribe to oasis with bdo for more episodes of soul snacks